Okay, uh, La Calama, thank you for uh, having me to Öserling in Aarhus. And um, there's a few questions that uh, could be very interesting to, to hear you answer because uh, I have been wondering, ever f uh, the first time I met you, that's many years ago, I met you in Copenhagen, we had a meeting there. And uh, there's one thing when we talk about Lakalama, nobody in Denmark really knows your story. And uh, I know that you were, you were born in 1944? Uh, yes. In, right. in, in uh, Eastern? In the Eastern part. Yeah. Have you any recollection of uh, Tibet when you were, you were, you were, um, you were chosen? as the, the new in, in the reincarnated Laka Lama? Yes. And you were five years old? That, that time I was five yeah. years old. Have you any remembrance of that? I don't say I was remember, because people chosen me yes. as a reincarnation Lama, but I did not say I'm the reincarnation of Laka Lama. No, no. No. But, but you, there were some signs that you were chosen by there are many signs. Do this. you remember some of them? No, they, there's something I remember that. <clears throat> uh, my family was a very, very poor family. Mm -hmm. And uh, my father is silversmith, Smith, not very clever one. And my mother, she is just householding. Mm -hmm. You can say, we have only one room, kitchen, and sleeping room, and no toilet. <laughs> no toilet? <laughs> you went outside? Yeah, toilet in the oh. field. Yes, of course. So then one day I told my parents, today we get some visitors. So I want to keep some kind of Tibetan chamba. We eat chamba. Yeah. And I make some bowl, samba bowl, three, four, and uh, on the stuff. So this is for my guest. Oh, yeah. That's what I have said. Oh, mm. and that was the same as the Laka Lama before you? He used to do the same thing, or? No, I can't say that. No. That's my child play. Oh, OK. I just play that. Yes, yes, yes. Then it's play fits. In the afternoon, mm -hmm. there comes three guests who they did not say they're coming for searching for Rakhalamata reincarnation. No. Because they need to go further. Yeah. They want to, if they can sleep in a ah. uh, small yeah. place. Mm -hmm. So then I told them that, oh yeah, I kept something for you. Oh. So that's just kind of my. That was you can the, say coincidence, yeah. you can say it's a child always play. But what do you think? I don't know. No? No. You don't feel like uh, the, the, the new incarnation of Lakala? No, I don't. No? No. But you were chosen? I was chosen by the High Lamas, yeah. what they say, yes. which I don't know. Okay. High lamas and high oracles, so mm. many different signs, which is a pointing that particular area, small village. So therefore, they are searching. They are searching not only that place, many other places too. All right. Yeah. So, but then you were taken to uh, to uh, a monastery. Or, or what? Then I was taken to the Batang. Batang oh, is, yeah, Batang, yeah. Yeah, it's a kind of more, you have to go three, four days to reach to the Batang. That time, there's no car, nothing. Okay. Just horse or just to. They took me and my parents and brothers, all. I mean, Escape from this village yes. in the night. Oh. And 
to cross the river. Oh yeah. Because the river is a border mm. for these two county yeah. border. Oh yeah. So when you cross the border and then they cannot come come and say catch. No. Okay. So uh, then you were you were educated or? Yeah, I was just five years old and I, they put me on the throne and many thousands they come and just respect, pay respect. And yes. Then, uh, very small education, some prayers and recitations and mm. like that. Okay. So, I was in Bataan only two years. Then the Chinese came or? Yeah, then okay. Chinese invasion come. Then... Uh, and this is, this is 1950? Yeah. Yeah. 1950. Yeah. And uh, of course it's not... I have arranged this uh, Laka Institute manager and other stuff. They arranged we should escape. Oh. To watch the central Tibet. To Lhasa. To Lhasa. Yes. How long was that trip? Uh, two months. Do you remember? I remember Some... a little bit yeah? on the way. Mm. I remember and uh, sometimes some place we stay three, four days to rest and then we go on. Um, then finally, I reached to the Lhasa. But one thing I'll say, Lhasa Lama's, uh, what you call, position yes. in the central government is uh, quite high. Yes. Not the highest. No, no. Quite high. Yeah. So therefore, when I reached to the Lhasa area first time, Yes. Then the government and Dharama will send the welcoming uh, representative. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, some gift and Dharama's blessing strings and all this uh, welcome. Yeah. yeah. So you stayed in Lhasa for, for how long there? Before I come to the monastery, yeah. I stayed in Lhasa around two months. Okay. Because at that time, one had to prepare that I can enter the monastery. Mm -hmm. And before that, I need to have the audience with His Holiness. Yeah. And all this took time. How old was uh, he, His Holiness at that time? Uh, I was uh, around seven. Yeah. And now, now you see. His oldest is eight years older than me. Eighteen years? Eight. Eight years yeah. older, okay. Not oh, yeah. that much. No, no. So, but when, when um, one uh, see you two together, mm. when you are together with uh, His Holiness the Dalai Lama, yeah. it looks like that you have a very good correspondence, that you, uh, you seem close in, in, in in a, a very unexplainable way. There's a closeness. I wouldn't call it, oh, I'm so close to Dharama, Dharama is my friend. No, 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 no. But I don't say that. No. The closeness is based on care for others. Yes. That's what Have the yeah. content, the motivation to benefit and help others, not stuck with selfish ego. No, that's what one feels. Yeah. And that's what, what it was so powerful for me to experience both you and uh, His Holiness. And when you were together, yes. there was this, it's unexplainable because you can really not put words on it. No. But there was, you, you created a kind of sacred space together between you, I think. Yes, I wouldn't call, give any identity, but there's something harmonically, yes. I would say. Yeah. 
that harmonically environment is connecting to the audience. Yes. And I think, as you said before we, we started this recording, mm. that when you teach, you don't, you don't use so much words. Yeah. You do by showing. Yes. You show people how uh, the practice and, and, and just... I think also, uh, like, uh, do you remember once when you were uh, here in Aarhus with um, something I arranged when, when you came to sing? Yeah. That was very, very powerful, you were singing. Okay. And I think that there's so much uh, communication of... Um, there's a, an, an unique humility in the way you sing. And, and it, it kind of uh, corresponds with, with, with the heart for those who listen. Mm. What I sing is connected to wishful harmony, non-violence. Yes. So then sing is not, what I sing is not the most important. It's my motivation, yes. intention. Of course. Connect exactly. to the heart. Yes. That's the, my side. Yeah. What listeners think, that's the other side. That's their side. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like I, I must uh, go back and um, mm. when you, um, at one point, from Lhasa and from the monastery, you have to leave Tibet. Tibet. Yeah. And you go to India. Mm. Was that together with Dalai Lama? Or you... you uh, that's a 59. 59, yeah. Yes. I wouldn't say exactly uh, I left Tibet together with his own, it's, it's not. No. Somewhere I know, year before, we have to escape. Yes. That's clear. Yeah. And the day Chinese, they shoot big guns towards the Depo Monastery, mm -hmm. and that day, all the monks, they are shocked, yeah. unexpected. Of course. Then I talk with my master what to do, say we escape. And he was a little slow in the morning time. Uh, I don't know, yes, moment, wait, wait, wait. Then finally he said, okay, now we run. Yes. So we run up to the mountain, just clothes, nothing. Mm. Then cross the mountain. So that two days before, it seems to me, His Holiness has been uh, uh, left the summer palace towards India. Oh yeah. So when we come to two days, to the village, then we got the information, his holiness has left. Okay. So this way, yeah. however, after crossing the border, uh, we had a chance to uh, border for India. We had the chance to have the audience with his holiness mm -hmm. in Tawang. Tawang. Yeah. That's the first village. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, this way, and uh, there's something I can share with you. When I left monastery and uh, escape, yeah. I never think of lost. No. I left. Yes. There's a difference between the thinking of lost. Mm. Uh, yeah. I left. Yes. We always leave something behind. It's nothing new. No. It's so normal. We do that all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Each year, you have the birthday. Yeah. 
You leave one year behind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. So if you can't leave behind, you can't have the birthday. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. So it's not something. Mm. When you put the level of lost, mm. then it's uh, dominating yeah. your emotion. Yes. I didn't do that. No. Face the hardship, life and death. Yeah. It's nothing wrong. Mm. General, there's no guarantee how long you live. Yeah. There's no guarantee. No. Facing the hardship, that time you accept life and death both. Look forward. Yes. Not look backward. Mm. Then you give all the effort with your strength, not with your weakness. Mm. So, this way I'm still alive. <laughs> Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah, but uh, like I have to take you a little bit. We, we have to look a little bit back because you went to um, to India and you became part of the Dalai Lama's exile uh, a government. Mm. But how did you somehow end up here in Denmark? That's very strange. Mistake. A mistake? Yes. Or coincidence? Or was it meant to be? Or what do you think? Uh, coming to Denmark was not anything planned. Okay. I was invited to Finland, Helsinki. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm for psychology conference. Yes. Then due to my new passport and visa, everything had to make new. Yes. So it delayed. Yeah. When I reached to Copenhagen, I had to change the flight from Copenhagen to Helsinki. Yeah. There was a two hours waiting time. Then I called my Tibetan friend who already in Denmark. Yeah. And uh, I said, I mean, at the airport and I'm waiting for the next flight to the Helsinki. Then he was not home, but his English friend is home. Then this English friend says, why are you going to Finland? Because the conference is uh, finished. Oh. Then I asked, okay, then can you come and get me from the airport? <laughs> so this way, I come to my friend's house in Hersom. Yeah. But how, wasn't you meant to go back to, to India? Uh, yes. But uh, before I came here, I had a disc slip very heavily in India, two years. You had what? Disc slip, oh, discus yeah. plus. Yes. Two years. And okay. I was walking like this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See. Then here, I got the treatment in the this hospital operation. Oh, yeah. Then the professor told me that now they cannot really count if I go back to India. If it goes wrong, they can fix it. Mm. Then the professor has been uh, around half a year giving the letter and I can stay half a year. Okay. Then of course after that, then accordingly I had to marry. Oh yeah. To stay. Yeah. So, that's just happened like that. <laughs> yeah. So mm. you met uh, Pia and... Uh, That's a later one. Yeah, First right. time I was married with a, uh, one Danish okay. woman. Mm -hmm. And she had very heavy psychosis. Oh, yeah. So we, we got uh, one son. Mm -hmm. And now my son, he inherited this sickness oh. from the mother. Oh, yeah. It's not only mother, the families has. Oh, okay. 
So now, anyhow, he's much better. He's very fine. Okay. <coughs> But so that was how you came to stay here in 1970 so 76. 76. Yes. Yeah. But you still believe it was a coincidence. Yes. Or, yes, it was an accident. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The people ask him, I always said that was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you miss go, going back to India? No. No? The funny reason is, uh, before I came to Denmark, uh, to the West, yeah. half a year before, I had a dream. I take the aeroplane, come to the land. It's dark and white. Then I saw the house with a white tower. Mm -hmm. Behind the house, there's a lake. That dream repeated five nights. Mm -hmm. Then I was wondering, oh, what was that? I'd never been that I haven't seen before. No. Then later I said, okay, dream, forget about it. Mm. So, when I come to Denmark, my friend's house has the white tower. Mm -hmm. Behind the house, there's a lake. Mm. And it was wet and dark. <laughs> yeah. so everything what I dreamt. According to your dream. According to. <laughs> Then I don't know how it comes. No. Who shows me? Mm -hmm. Yes. I don't know. No. To me, it sounds like something that was meant to be in one way or the other. There was meant to be how you look at. Yes. How meant to be in connection with karmic relation. Yes. That's another way to look at. Exactly. Accident. Also, sometimes it connects to the karmic patterns. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, now you're here in Denmark. Mm. Do you feel uh, at home here? I don't follow my emotional feelings. No, no. Wherever I stay... You are at home. I'm there. Okay. Mm. Great. So... You can be anywhere. Yes. Yeah. Is there, there's no need for you in order of when you are the incarnated Laka Lama, you are not needed in in uh, in India or Tibet for for that uh, congregation that you had there. Are you visiting them or? I was visiting two, three times there. Yeah. Their way of looking, my way of looking, is a little difference. Yeah. My way of looking, they need one uh, highly developed spiritual person to help them. They need, and you are not. You don't and feel that you that are. That does not have to be laka laka laka. Okay. Okay. But you had one of the same teachers as uh, His Holiness the Dalai Lama. Yes. Yes. Both. I got the teachings from both Dalai's junior and senior teacher. Oh yeah. Have you any uh, recollection of your teacher? No, I don't. No. You know, there's two ways. One can also write down and kind of more. That's one way. Mm. Another way is what I bring into my daily life. That's mostly important for me. Mm. Not on the paper. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> But I think, Laka, that that is something that struck me the first time I met you, mm. that you uh, 
you are so genuine. You uh, are what you preach, or not preach, uh, for, because you are not a preacher. Mm -hmm. But you, uh, you kind of, as you said when before we started this, you are a doer, mm. not a talker, not a speaker. You do it by, by the way you go in the daily life, and that's what I really touched me, you know. And I'm sorry that we go back to the the the, the meeting with the Dalai Lama when, mm. when he was here. That was my first experience of of you and him together. Mm. And I think that uh, everybody who who witnessed this. Um, felt the same as I, that it was some a very rare combination of two. And you, I know that you think of yourself not to be a developed spiritual mm. person, but I do, because I think your way of spirituality is much more than just reading books and just, but it's something that, that you have with you. I don't, I can't explain it. It's something that is you. So in that way, I think maybe you're not the incarnation of Laka Lama, mm. but you're the incarnation of humility and, and uh, kindness. And that's what, I, what I really I, strikes me. I don't have the paper book. No. <laughs> I have a book here. <laughs> <Yeah>. There. <laughs> I read my book. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. So you um, you have find uh, you also that uh, Buddhism in Denmark is an expanding thing. More and more people uh, seems to be be interested in mindfulness and mm. something. How do you, what do you feel about that? Uh, that people are taking just mindfulness out and present this as something outside of Buddhism. Is that all right, you think, or do you feel? Uh, mindfulness, you can uh, look in connection with many different. Yes. Mindfulness is kind of more uh, stable focus. Yes not jumping. Mm. Yes. Then by that, not only just surface, focus go more deeper and deeper. Yeah. So, for example, mindfulness can be used into a business. Mm. Then Business, you look two way. Earn money, that's one way of looking. Mm. Exchange, that's another way of looking. Mm. Then, earning money, you can't, without giving anything, you can't earn anything. No. So, give and take comes in. Mm. Yes. Then give and take in connection with selfish ego, in connection with non-selfish ego, so that's two different fields. Yeah. So that's up to individual. Mm. In connection with selfish ego, then it's not a very pleasant way of earning money. No, of course. In connection with non-selfish ego, that's quite a, a pleasant and one can appreciate a mm. lot. Yes. One can benefit a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So this way, mindfulness can use in connection with. Yes. So then in connection with <coughs> Buddhism, you call it Buddhism. but. Truth is Dharma, yeah. essence. Mm. Then, with the identity of a religion, Buddhism, Christianity, we have different identities. Yeah. But one thing, 
people don't know in the West. I want to tell you. Tibetan language, the philosophical language, we call it Ch. In the Sanskrit, it's a Dhamma. Oh. Okay? Yeah. Then what we say, Ch Lu, Ch the Dhamma, mm -hmm. way to practice Dhamma, then Buddhist way. Christianity way, Islam, you know. Then comes Mahayana, Hinayana, Theravada. Yeah. All this comes. Yeah. Lu, 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 lu. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The way. Yeah. So, I think this is a really profound way of saying yeah. chu, chu, or chu, lu. Mm -hmm. Yes. Then, way of uh, practicing Dharma, then there's two, we call it, uh, who practice uh, Dharma to the Buddhist philosophy, we call it Namba, Ina. Ina? Yeah. Ina? Yeah. Ina, outer. Okay. Then, who believe in the God and follow the God, they, their way of practice is outer. That means, Savior, I say, I'm my own Savior. Mm -hmm. ha by having practice in Dharma, mm -hmm. I say, and then, when you, some uh, way they look the God as Savior, then they say, out, Savior is the outer. Mm. And then I can hang on, yeah. doing nothing. Yeah, 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 of course. So, but but uh, I think that what you are talking about now mm. is also in Christianity, for example, because uh, uh, Yeshua, or Jesus, mm. he says that the kingdom of heaven is inside of you. Yeah. And that's the same thing, I think. It's not a place, it's a, a condition yeah. that you, 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 a state mm. that you, you can bring yourself into. Mm. But um, could you explain to, to us, and, and I think also some of the viewers that is uh, watching this, mm. could you explain in a short way Dharma to, to uh, mm. how to... to uh, to live your dharma? Yeah, very simple way. Not following harmful thoughts. Not, f Not harmful, harmful, harmful thoughts. Harmful thoughts. Mm -hmm. And following the non-violence. Yes. That's dharma. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Great. Has it, uh, is there also, uh, has it also something to do with your duty? That, I, or you wouldn't say that? Or? I don't have any duty. <laughs> no? Okay. So it's not something that we were supposed to live up to as human beings. It's I, a choice. I can share what I can share. Mm -hmm. I have no duty to make you Buddhist. No. No way. No, no, that's not what I meant, but I meant to act according to harmful thoughts, not to, to have harmful thoughts and to have harmless thoughts. That's a duty to, to try to be, um, live up to your fellow man. Not to have the harmful thoughts, if I, can, if I say to you, first, you, I guide you to recognize your own harmful thoughts. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes. By recognizing, do you feel pleasant and unpleasant? Mm. You have to see. Yeah. Okay? Yes. Understand. And how much space it takes, mental space it takes. Yeah. You have to see. Mm. So when you see clear, then you come to really 
realize something, yeah, that's the fact. Mm. So then better not to follow. Then when you stop following this, then nonviolence is kind of naturally developed. Yes. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can give you one example. Cause uh, using the drug to smoke or whatever, taking yeah. drug. Okay. Yeah. While they are taking drug, they don't recognize. They what? They don't see how it's damaging. No, 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 no. Okay. Yes. When they stop overcoming the drug, then they see. Yeah. Their health. It's more different. Yeah. Mm. Physically, mm. mentally. Mm. Yes. So that's the same. Yeah. Harmful drug. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's something that you find out as you mature that your own harmful thoughts is the one who's really harmed by them is yourself. Mm -hmm. You really. That's what Buddha says. Mm -hmm. You are your own master. Mm. Not the Dalai Lama is not my master. Mm. Truth, I'm my own master. Mm. I'm being aware of my thoughts, mm -hmm. what to follow, not to follow. Yeah. Mm. In Buddhism, yeah. you also you also pray. To, to gods, to different entities or gods, uh, mm -hmm. yes? It, I mean, in Buddhism there are many gods, isn't that so? Mm. To understand, because uh, when you have to translate into the English, then yeah. God, God, God. Yeah. The truth, we are in the highly compassionate, developed, highly compassion and love developed, highly wisdom developed, that kind of spiritual aspect. Yeah. That spiritual aspect is not a physically. No, no. It's I, I, that's what I, what I think. It's, it's a kind of uh, consciousness uh, or what? I also can't say consciousness. No? Some thing is kind of difficult to describe. Okay. Yeah. Something pureness. But pure word, pure, it also doesn't fit. No. It's something you can't put the word on. All right. Like a Buddha. Mm -hmm. We call it Buddha, but philosophically it's Sang Je, there are two words. Yeah. Sang means awake. Mm -hmm. Je means wisdom over all existence. Okay. Then you can ask, oh, Sanjay, Buddha knows the camera how to function. It's not that. It's just that's nothing to do with wisdom. No. <laughs> no, no. It's technology. Yeah, of course. Okay. So when you look more deeper and deeper, yeah. see more deep. Yeah. Then there's no solid. No solid. Yeah. Hmm. Mostly shape identity we recognize. Mm. I say, I see you. Mm. Why I say that? I see your face. Mm. Yes, yeah. But I don't see you. No, I understand. Mm. 
Can you find you? If I can find me, yeah. I'm trying. That also do. <laughs> 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 oh yeah. So when you try to find me, mm -hmm. then there's no me. Then what is left? <laughs> yeah. That's right. So what I call gods, mm. and that you say it's very hard to put words on it mm. or to describe it. That is something that you, as a Buddhist, mm. use to help you uh, to to reach a certain uh, state of awareness, awareness, or well, it's still too too difficult to to. Um, <coughs> mostly awareness. Yeah. This one. Mm. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, like I, I must also ask you, um, the Dalai Lama, when he was here last time, and every time he goes to the West, mm. he always talk about Christianity, that if you're a Christian, he, he, he thinks that you should stay Christian. Yeah, of course. But he thinks that you should go deeper yeah. into Christianity. Yes. Instead of, because, and I think, I don't know if he's, th he's thinking about that maybe when people go to the church, mm. they don't get the full perspective. And I think a lot of people who are Christian by birth, mm. when they don't find in the church what they are looking for, they start looking somewhere else. And a lot of people go to Buddhism and stuff like that. Yes. So for them to find the deeper aspect mm. of Christianity, they must work on their own because there's no tradition in Denmark and in a lot of Western countries for, for searching deeper in yes. Christianity. And it's something that I have been working with for many, many years. Uh, and I see there's so many, uh, they have so many things in, in, uh, in common, Buddhism and the deeper Christianity. When you look into the deeper, of course, I don't say I know the Christian philosophy or all this. No. But what I have been uh, once writing in the political, mm -hmm. that churches not only stay with the ceremony, churches need to have the philosophically school. Mm, yes. And then teach kitchen philosophy yeah. more deep. Yeah. So kitchen philosophy, when you teach, guide, that's uh, unconditional love. Yes. Compassion. Of course. Yeah. When Jesus was put on the cross, Jesus, what the uh, traditionally they say, I take every sin on me. Yes. So that's a, in the Buddhism, we talk about don't learn practice. Yeah. Give and take. Okay. Give all the best wishes. Yeah. Take all the suffering. Yeah. This kind of mentally. Yes, I understand. So, this way. Exactly. That's Very also the, the way I see uh, yeah. the Christ on the co yeah. cross. Exactly. It's an it's, um, opportunity uh, for everybody mm. to do the same. Yes. Yes. Shown by a great example. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So, it will be very, very good to study kitchen, study not just put in the university. Yeah. It need to have the yes. under the church. Yes. And it, more deep. Yeah. Yeah. Then as you are doing a lot, that's one thing you can also 
thank you of. Yes. And more from different countries who really deeper into the kitchen philosophy. Yeah. Inviting and arrange something kind of a explain about yes. what Jesus deep philosophy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Is there something before we we uh, end this uh, interview? Something that you would like to to say, or that you think that will be, if you should say something for to the situation of the world today, right now, mm. and you look around the world and see how many problems there are. Yes. And for example, yesterday I heard that uh, the United Nations, they have made a new report that in 15 years, 15 years, mm. there will be no more drinking water mm. in, on Earth. That's, I mean, that's uh, just around the corner. It's very soon, yes? Yes. What I can say, but nobody will listen, nobody will try to understand. I think a lot of people will actually try and listen. Be aware of what wasting resources. Yes like food, how many food, how much food we throw, which can able to feed many poor people. Yeah. And in Denmark, some who stay in the apartment, they use the hot water without any kind of special controlling, yeah. wasting a lot. Yeah. And then I ask why you do that? Oh, it's already included in the <laughs> flat land. Yeah. So it's kind of... Hmm. Just spend. Just spend. Yeah. Then, at my own, I'm being quite much aware of. Mm sorting the garbage yeah. and something food left. Mm. I have the opportunity to throw on top of the uh, garage roof. Mm. Birds, they love it. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes 20, 30 different birds. Mm. It doesn't take so long time, just five minutes, mm. and then they're there. Mm. They know that. Yeah. So this way, I don't waste mm. in a yeah. way. No. And even you take the shower, first you use a little water to make it wet, and then use shampoo or mm. soap, then use the water to mm. rinse the soap. Yeah. So this way, many ways you can really not waste. Mm. I don't say save. No. Not waste. Yes. <laughs> like, uh, is there something philosophical or something you could say? Just uh, or some a word for, for us to... Philosophically, I can say be a little more appreciate and be thankful. Mm. Not everything, of course. Yeah. When you're thankful, you got a cup of tea. Yeah. Then it's not just a cup of tea. Mm. You give the value. I agree. I exactly. And food, things, mm. whatever. Yeah. Could give a little hand to do things. Yeah. Be thankful. Yeah. Life is being alive is very thankful. Mm. Remember that every morning. I do. Yeah. Wake up. Thank you, I'm not dead yet. <laughs> yeah. That's a beautiful way of thinking. Mm. Yeah. Then, in the day, I want to uh, use my actions mm. to do something good. Yes. 
no matter. Even you help your wife or husband, just clean. Yeah. You don't need to show. No, of course. Be aware. Yeah. Naka, thank you very much. Okay. It's no been a pleasure to uh, to meet you again.